faith complacency is absent the devil does not chase after empty vessels hello A.W. Tosa said that complacency is the deadly fall for all spiritual growth. If you want to stagnate, actually, if you want to die spiritually, be complacent. Be complacent. There are believers, they purport to be believers, but you cannot see any works that actually prove they are believers. You don't see any works that go with their belief. Hello? You cannot subscribe to any belief system and we don't see fruits. If you lack faith, you sign up for spiritual death. If you're intimidated, if you're a coward, remember when God chose Gideon to go and be the deliverer of Israel. He told him, I want to vet the men down at the river because cowards will never take up any assignment of the Lord. Because God will never give you an assignment that you're capable of tackling. He will always give you an assignment that you think and actually prove that you have no ability whatsoever to undertake. Because it is not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. That that discouragement that is coming to attack, that discouragement is actually an attack on your faith. That discouragement is an attack on your faith. It's not because you lost the job it's not because the relationship is not working it is an attack on your faith i will show you something today and you will never give the devil a chance in your life that offense that you have in your heart that bitterness is an attack on your faith it is not because somebody offended you as long as the devil will offend your life he knows that you will never go anywhere as long as your faith is dumb by the enemy you will never make motion to the right, right direction your faith is at stake always every time the devil is not after your money he doesn't need any money to operate the devil is not after your marriage he's not marrying hello he is not after your children he, he, he got not business with them he is after your faith your faith is what it what is at stake the devil wants you to change your mind and keep believing that god is unfair god has favorite favorites god you know is not like this he doesn't answer my prayer he favors my friend over me he wants you always to scandalize in your mind the god of heaven the enemy knows nothing will move in your life in the absence of your faith. The only thing you have as a believer to God is your faith. Hallelujah. Faith is what moves mountains. Hello. Please, you're going to guard that faith with every breath in you. Jesus said, if you believe, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed. And it will be so if you doubt not. Faith is what moves mountains. Tell your neighbor, it's not just prayers. Faith is what moves mountains. It is what uproot obstacles. Faith is what can uproot psychomine tree by the root and cast it into the sea. Faith. The devil is after your faith. He's been attacking your health because he wants you to believe that God is not a healer. He wants you to believe that God cannot heal you. He wants you to believe that your problem is beyond God. What is he doing? He's playing mind game with your faith. He is after your faith. If he can dampen your faith, he can ground you in that sickness all your life. If he can dampen your faith, he can kill your vision. Guard your faith. The enemy is after paralyzing your faith. People now believe marriages don't work anymore. Hello, talk to me. Talk to me. They believe marriages don't work. See the woman who, who had an issue with my husband. They had an, a, an accident. And see how he's coming at him. He's, she's actually coming to bend. You men sit on us. She's been wounded. She's been hurt. She's bitter with life. And now she finds a man to bend into. They believe marriages are scum. Have you heard them? Have you seen them? Have you read it yourself? Because why the devil has succeeded in dumping.
abandoning their faith as long as the oldest institution that God instituted is concerned marriage. Even believers, they are in church bringing the Holy Ghost. They have surrendered and have subscribed to the notion that marriages are a scam. It's not because the devil doesn't want you to get married. He has nothing to do with it, whether you're married or not. He just wants to distort your faith as long as that area, that institution is concerned. You have been praying, but you cannot see any change. Yet the devil, all he wants is to dampen your faith. Talk to me, somebody. You have even stopped praying. You have even stopped believing. You have even stopped trusting God. That's where the devil has been going all this time. The moment you entertain the thought that prayers are not working, you have given the enemy a free win. You have given him a leeway into stifling your faith. The moment you think that God cannot come through for you because that issue has been there for years and you don't know that he's the ancient of days, he's the rock of ages, you have dampened your faith and the devil has received a free win into your life. Faith is what causes you to believe that though you were born and bred in Babylon culture, still nothing can stop you. Because it's not by power, it's not by your background, it's by the spirit of the Lord. God has not called you and he wants the, you, you, it's not your father who is sponsoring you. It's not your son in which is sponsoring you. The God of heaven says, I will be with you to the close of it. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. That means whatever happens from the time you are conceived to this point, it has nothing, no power whatsoever to stop you. Because no mountain can stand if you have the faith to speak to it mark 9 19 according to your faith be it unto you how could a samaritan woman move an entire city into believing jesus a samaritan woman who was an outcast he had a story that nobody wanted to relate with but she moved an entire city to believe in jesus because of it because of him she actually is the one who opened the gate of the gospel for jesus in samaria hallelujah she was the doorway she was the gate of the soteria in the, among the samaritans the bible says for two days jesus started with them and it was a taboo they were actually cut off from the gospel but a woman who had no identity we don't even know her name till tomorrow a woman who was with a sick man who was not even her husband was a gateway that opened the entire city into believing in Jesus because she had paid I tell you today unless you believe in God she will testify against you in the day of judgment unless you believe Nineveh will testify against you in the day of judgment have you not seen the finger of God have you not seen the power of God in your day have you not seen God save? Have you not seen God heal? Why then doubt if a Samaritan who had not said in the bread of life received Jesus and believed? How much more you? How much more you? To whom much is given, much is required. You, you have been saved, washed by his blood, filled with the Holy Ghost. God demands to see that faith move mountains in your life. Sometimes you need to open up your mouth and clear the way ahead of you. You don't need a backup. You don't need a prayer group. You don't need intercessors. You got what it takes. The faith of God is in you the late archbishop Nebka, uh, the late archbishop benson Nidahosa told people to actually open up his mouth in the in light tv broadcast and said god you can stay away from this i will handle it myself the witches had gathered they wanted to do their annual meeting the same time he was doing his meeting he said it cannot happen he said god you mind your own business this one i can deal you don't have to try everybody with a punk 
God pray for me help me don't you know that you have the faith of God and it can move mountains it can pluck out psychomine trees don't you know don't you know you can do wonders you are actually a sign and a wonder there is nothing that cannot obey you mountains can obey you valleys can obey you seas and rivers can obey you sickness can obey you pain can obey you it's only you who think they cannot obey you because you have not commanded them you have not spoken to them it's because you negotiate with them it is because you are intimidated before them who told you you are a grasshopper you are a battle axe in the hand of the Lord. Did God not say he will drive out your enemies before you? What makes you think that it is by your might or strength that the enemies will flee before you? Don't you believe he is the Lord God of hosts, mighty and strong in battle. Mighty and strong in battle mighty and strong in battle who has commanded a thing and it came to pass if the mouth of the Lord has not spoken who said you cannot bear children who said you cannot be a millionaire who said you cannot be married who said if the mouth of the Lord has not commanded it it cannot come to pass who said you cannot pastor a mega church who said you cannot be a real estate Developer who said you cannot be a lender to nations? Come on, who said? Tell me who said? Tell me now who said? Tell me who said you will have to bear that infirmity all your life? Show me that doctor that told you you are diabetic from today. Tell me if the mouth of the Lord has not commanded it, did not get it, rejected. Come on, rejected. The problem is with believers is that we are so naive. You walk into a doctor's uh, office, they hand you over a report. You are hypertensive from today. Please I subscribe this to you and you go back and say now I am hypertensive. You remember to take medicine more than you remember to pray. You remember to take your bread toes more than you remember the Lord your God. Have you not heard that the Lord said whatever he says, God sending you in his word so shall it be it cannot be otherwise the bible says some me and i will take away the sicknesses and the diseases of egypt from your midst from your midst show me the servant of the lord and i will show you one that has been exempted from the plagues of egypt one whose bread is pressed once whose water is pressed even though the water in your area is contaminated you are exempted even though they sell you contaminated maize flour you are blessed your bread is blessed come on now we live by faith not by sight we walk by faith not by sight I made a decree in my kitchen it is published in my kitchen I walked in there one day and I decreed I made a decree that devil can read in capital letters any food that is coming from this kitchen is blessed there is no poison that will be consumed in this kitchen you may come to my house bearing poisonous food hello as soon as it hits my kitchen it is blessed it is clean we walk by faith not by sight not by sight amen there will be no food poisoning in my house and we all having running stomach because we ate what as soon as it hits my kitchen it is pressed because i have an altar there as i am cooking sometimes i'm praying in the holy ghost i'm thinking about god for the provision god will not provide poison for us to eat and die oh kalama sekata we walk by faith not by sight show me that man show me that one thing that will take you out if there is no God in heaven if there is no God in heaven show me who drew a line 
and put you in a box and said you cannot go beyond here we walk by faith not by might nor by power but by the spirit of the lord it's in of the spirit of the lord that came upon elijah that he overtook ahab who was on chariots and said not the god of heaven come on now it is in him will leave we move we have our being i know you are fortified but god can give you speed he can give you speed like sarah he can give you strength to bring forth this god does not play kalongo longo with us whatever he says it does whatever he says he means it and i take every word literally i believe every word he says when there is an attack on your marriage the devil is not after your wife he's not even after your husband he's not even after you divorcing he's after your faith he's after your faith he wants you to see how you married the wrong person so that your mind can shift from faith and now walk in carnality for whatever is not done by faith is seen he wants you to digress from faith into carnality come on now the devil is in after your job he is in after your promotion he is after your faith jesus said when i return shall i paint to find pain faith on other ah lama sakata have a good said even though the fig tree do not blossom i go to my stall it is empty yet will i enjoy in the god of my salvation that now is faith job said oh this sauce on my body cannot scandalize my god even though you slay me yet will i trust that is faith the devil is up to you faith after you've lost your car you've lost your job you've lost your image you've lost everything that could be lost you're still holding on to faith god will come through for you and he will just bamboozle everybody with the breakthrough he will give you because why you held his name in integrity look at how he dealt with job that's how he deal with faithful people you are faithful in the valley you are faithful in the mountain you are faithful in drought in plenty you remain faithful it's about your faith tell your neighbor it's about your faith it's about your faith those difficulties you're going through it's about your faith the devil is about your faith he's after your faith because he's after the faith of god in you he's after god remember every time the devil is fighting you he's after god he's after god and he knows without faith it is impossible to please god god say to zerubbabel who art thou before this mountain he told him to say who art thou O ye mountain before zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain see how god deals with men he would have sent the prophet to prophesy but zerubbabel had to open his mouth and say who art thou O great mountain before zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain the work of rebuilding the temple was not a walkover it was not a walk in the park it was daunting the hardest a man probably could have been given at that time but god said even though this mountain seems so great the bible says the mountain was great but he said it shall become a plain and you shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting crying grace grace unto it you're coming from grass to grace you're coming from reproach into honor you're coming from shame into glory god has the power if you can hold on to faith elijah was the man just like you and i remember after the mount camel contest where he summoned fire from heaven and fire came immediately after that encounter he had to pray seven times just to see a cloud like a hand of man for the rain to come a man who's come a man who prays and fire shows up this time he had to endure send his servant seven times seven times and the only thing he could see is a little cloud like a hand of a man 
God is trying to say something here. It is not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Just because you call fire yesterday and fire came, don't think that fire will answer today. God might be just wanting to take you to another level of glory. So he has to need you to be more patient, more endure more in that affliction. Pray some more to see the glory of God. Come on, somebody. Seven times. His servant had to check seven times now seven times on Mount Camel he did not need any servant to check anything he called and fire came down once brethren is about your faith it's about your faith if the enemy can succeed in dampening your faith he has sent you into a life of defeat he has caused your potency to command victory around you You better reject every report you receive that does not look like the report of the Lord. Every report you receive, go through it, measure it against the report of the Lord. If there is variance, reject it back to sender. No matter who sent it, whether they are validated, whether they are qualified, whether they are professionals, reject that report. Believe only the report of the Lord. We're going to pray in a minute. Believe the report of the Lord. Believe the report of the Lord. Believe the report of the Lord. Believe. I told you, I observed a tendency in my family. From my mother's side, not getting married, getting children with different men. And because God gave me an advantage to understand spiritual warfare, when I was still in high school, I began to contend with it. And I saw that spirit come after my sister who follows me. And I declared war. I told the devil, you're not going to duplicate that crap in my home. I am here to represent the kingdom of God. And you know, the environment wasn't so good. We didn't receive parental love. Our dad wasn't there. We didn't know what love was like. And you know, in such an environment, the daughters are, 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 they, they are vulnerable to look for love out there. Is that not so? You're vulnerable to look for validation. You're susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. And I declared war. And I told the devil, the battle lines have been drawn. You are not coming for any other of my sisters. You've already taken my sister back off because the blood is against you. I refuse to receive the report that is not coming from God. I will not pay the bill that I did not order for. It doesn't matter who paid for it. It doesn't matter who ordered for it. I am not settling for it and that is the faith of God. It doesn't matter who's doing it. You don't have to be a part and parcel of that. You are peculiar. God has called us to stand out. He has called us to be peculiar. In fact, we are a royal priesthood we are crafted in the family of God and the family of God has no speck the family of God has no blemish the family of God has no infirmity the family of God is royal and looks like God it has the glory of God can I get a witness here you don't have to sit and conform that is being carnal. You're walking in sin. You're making God look bad on you. Look at everything. I dare you go back. Look at everything around your life through the lenses of faith. Whatever doesn't look like God, he me a market for deletion. He a market for coming down. He a market for being pulled down. He a market for death. For God has to be seen in our life. We are tired of walking with God but denying the power thereof having the form of godliness but denying the power thereof everything about us has to be like God I said has to be like God everything was nailed on that cross so that we walk in full liberty the whole redemptive package is for you is you as for partaking you can partake of the whole redemptive package you don't have to walk in health and your health, you in wealth and your health is deteriorating. God is not an author of confusion. 
the blessing of God make it rich it does not add sorrow to it God will not give you money so that you can have the best insurance because of that, that infirmity in your body God will have you prosper even as you, your soul prospers you, you prosper even as your soul prospers you need prosperity round hallelujah I need myself healthy I need my mental health right I need my finances healthy I need my relationships healthy I need me my peace of mind I dare you today we gonna delete we gonna remove every handwriting of the wicked by faith and decree and declare it's a new season for us ah, announce a new season announce a shift is coming in the name of Jesus rise up on your feet everybody give me Hebrews 20, 11 29 we're gonna pray for five minutes then I'll drop this microphone are you ready for prayer are you sure you are if you have received that word get ready to wage war with it if you're okay with where you are you settle there the Bible says by faith they pass through the Red Sea as by dry land please read that with me by faith they pass through the Red Sea as by dry land the same Red Sea that drowned the Egyptians was the same Red Sea that took them to the other side hallelujah what is drowning others in this time will not drown you it shall be your salvation the vehicle that is derailing others shall be the vehicle of your salvation of your deliverance come on open up your mouth and declare no plague shall come near your dwelling nothing shall bring you down whatever is bringing homes down shall not bring you a stone come on pray Pray, pray, pray. Whatever is eating up marriages shall not eat mine. I decree and declare we pass through every Red Sea. Let it be dry land right now. Whilst our enemies drown in it, in the name of Jesus, come on, pray. No situation, no prediction, no decree, no system of Egypt shall bring you down. No handwriting of hell shall bring you down whatever is killing young people prematurely shall not kill you whatever is bringing men down it shall not bring you down whatever is killing our children it shall not kill you you shall pass as by dry land come on pray every sea of death every sea of affliction every sea of bankruptcy every sea of poverty it shall not drown you it shall not drown you it shall not drown you come on declare i shall not drown my marriage shall not drown my finances shall not drown i shall not drown i shall not drown come on come on pray you shall not drown you shall not drown. I 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 shall not everybody say i shall not drown my faith shall not drown my faith in god shall not drown my love for god shall not drown my relationship shall not drown my job shall not drown my business shall not drown my marriage shall not drown my finances shall not drown my health shall not drown i shall go through the other side victorious in the name of jesus any sea appointed to drown me i rise above i rise above in the name of jesus any person anything assigned to drown me i override in the name of jesus hallelujah clap your hands and give God glory. We override, we override. Come on, the next point. Listen, the next point. Give me verse 30. 
The Bible says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Somebody say, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Those walls were so fortified that there was nothing to bring them down whatsoever. Any stubborn situation defying your life, defying your destiny, defying your health is falling down now. Come on, begin to pray. in jesus name i said in jesus name Amen. before we take the last one from jeremiah 30 16 say after me any wall of defeat any wall of failure any wall of sickness and disease fall down now in the name of jesus any wall of poverty any wall of shame any wall of reproach fall down by fire in the name of jesus any wall of premature death fall by fire in the name I am a barber. I am the head. I override every wall of demise in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hold on, my father. Jeremiah 13, 16 and 17. Let every wall that would be of your demise, every wall against your life and destiny, let it fall down by fire. In the name of Jesus, any wall that will hinder your progress, any wall that will hinder your success, any wall that will hinder your progress, let it come down by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, every daunting mountain ahead of you, let it come down, become a plain, become a plain. Listen. Come on, say, oh, who art thou, oh, great mountain? Oh, oh great mountain. Before holy Day, put your name. Before God. You shall become a place. You shall become a I place. give you a minute. Man, man, some that mountain. And declare shall become a place. Mountain of love. Mountain of balance. Every mountain. I command you. Mountain of despair. Mountain of despair. I summon you. Under my feet. Become a place. I summon you. Under my feet. Pastor, the microphone, Jeremiah 30, 16 and 17. Let's read together. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that pray upon thee will like thee for a prey. Mm -hmm. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Listen to me. The Lord shall restore health unto you. Amen. Not just physical health. Amen. Spiritual health. Amen. Emotional health. Yes. Economic health. Yes. Health shall be restored unto you. 
listen and he will heal all thy wounds everyone from shame everyone from poverty everyone from reproach every form of wound the Lord shall heal them listen I want us to pray that the Lord will devour your devourer he will plunder your plunderers hello he will spoil those who spoil you he will make those who look for you as pray make them as pray we pray that the lord will restore your health pray that the lord will heal your wounds come and begin to pray right now father may you devour my devour Restoration of health. Every wound Every power that has caused you pain. Clap them out of your life. Clap them out of your situation. Clap them out of your affairs. Clap them out. Yeah. Let somebody walk free. Let somebody walk free. Let somebody walk free. Let somebody walk free. Let somebody be restored. Be a nagada baba sha. Be made malada. Go be a mope. Mope na pa. Be a mama. Be a bebe. Be a bebe. Be a bebe. Be a bebe. Be a mama. Oh, be a mama. Be a mama. Be a mama. Be a mama. Restore, restore every brokenness. Restore every sickness. Restore the mother, every shame, Lord. Heal, 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 heal. Yaba, 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 yaba. I want to hear people pray. Be restored, be restored, be restored, be restored, be restored, be restored. Everybody lift up your right hands. Oh, as I speak, I say restored. Anything I say, I say restored. In the mighty name of the Lord, I say, Father, I said anything I said, just shout and say restore. Come on, say restore. Come on, say restore. Father, in the name of Jesus, anybody in this house that needs your touch, I speak restoration. I pray Jehovah, restore their health, restore their money, restore their minds, restore their marriages, restore their lives, restore their careers, restore their happiness. In the name of Jesus, anything you've lost, I speak restoration. Say restore. Come on, say restore. Come on, say restore. In this atmosphere, you can go home the same way you came. You cannot go home the same way you came. You are leaving the house of God restored. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. For it is not by might. Yes. It is not by power. Yes. It is by the power of God. Amen. It is by the spirit of God. It is by the dunamis power of God. Ah, the dunamis power of God is in this sanctuary. I want everyone under the sound of my voice. Even if you're watching me from wherever you are, lift up your hands and shout and say, I am restored. I am restored. Run, I am restored. I am restored. 